Hello my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. I'm over in Studio M, which is the metalworking side. And I already did this, so I'm, this is a reenactment, I'm going to be honest with you. I just wanted to show you how to troubleshoot small engines. People have trouble with this all the time, whether it's your lawnmower engine, your chainsaw engine, your weed eater, it don't matter. If it's a gas engine, these steps that I'm going to give you are all you really need to know how to figure out what your problem is. And it really is pretty simple. It's a lot simpler than most people think. You need four things for a gas engine to run. You need compression. Compression is where the piston goes up and compresses the air. That's really all it amounts to. You have to have compression. I'll show you how you can check that. You have to have spark. Easy to check that too, and I'll show you how. You have to have fuel, of course. If fuel's not getting to your engine, it can't run. And finally, you have to have air. So if, you know, if your air filter's completely clogged, it can't run, or it'll run too rich. Really, if you don't understand that, the air has to flow in, and when you choke off the air, get it, the word choke? When you use the choke, you're closing off the air, and it makes it suck more fuel because it can't suck air. So if that, that's all it is to a choke. That's all it amounts to. So I'm going to show you what the problem is with this chainsaw. My son brought it over here and says it won't run, you know. And I don't know specifically what the problem is yet, but I know which one of those four is the problem. So if that makes sense to you, and we'll show you how I determine that. Well, first of all, <clears throat> typically for compression, when you try to turn the engine over, if you're doing it, turning it over by hand, you can kind of tell if there's compression. I can already tell on this one because I've got experience that there's compression because it's hard to it, it it you know you can hear it pop 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 like that and it's but that's not the best way to check for compression and I'll show you how in a minute but I'm not going to do it right now because I'd have to take this apart so anyway right now uh, we don't know what's wrong with it we just know that when you pull it and you can see me pulling it it won't start yeah and if I choke it it still won't start Choking it makes it suck more fuel, you understand. Okay, so it's not running. It's not going to start. Okay, so how do we check these four things out? Let's pull the camera in here closer where you can see what I'm doing. In order to check the spark, compression, and air, and really even the fuel, we have to take this off. So all four things in this case can be checked by taking this off, or at least this will get us in the direction. you have a spark plug. The way you can test for spark, if you're a real man, you can just hold on to this with your finger and it'll and pull the rope and it'll shock the tar out of you. <laughs> That's not how I do it. It's, it's not recommended. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can poke something in here that's metal and get it very close to your spark plug there like this pull that rope and you'll be able to see a spark jump. That's if you don't have a tester. You can get these little testers off of Amazon, a spark tester, and they're really cheap. So you just plug this on the spark plug, you plug this inside here. There's this little uh, uh, bulb right here, and it's got. A, this is where you'll see the spark. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to see this on camera, I don't think so, and I don't know if I can hold it where you can see it, but I'm going to pull this. Yeah, you can maybe see that light up real quick. It lights up just red glow. Let me zoom you in and see if you can see it better. All right, I'll try it again, but it's really hard to hold this and still and everything. Maybe you can see it. Ah, it's hard to hold. But anyway, it does glow red, so we know we've got spark, so that's not our issue. At least it's not likely to be the issue. You can still have an issue even when you see spark, but on most of the time, nine times out of ten, if you see spark, you can kind of rule that out as your problem. <clears throat> okay, so then uh, we need to check compression. Well, to check compression, I just take the spark plug out. So let me do that real quick, and I'll get back to you here. 
Okay, I've taken the spark plug out. <clears throat> now to check compression, you can just first start pulling this over and you'll see how easy it pulls over now. That already tells me there's compression because it pulls over so easy now compared to the way it did before. But you can take your thumb and lightly put it over the hole and you'll feel this thing pull your thumb down in that hole because it sucks it down in the hole as it's going down and it blows it out as it's coming up. So you can feel that happening. And yeah, I can feel there's plenty of good compression. It's pulling pretty hard, in fact. So compression-wise, we're good. So we know it's not spark. We know it's not compression. So we only got two things to check. One of them's air, and one of them is fuel. <clears throat> Let me just tighten this back down. Okay. We'll put the spark plug back on. And we'll pop off the... Uh, air filter here and one thing you can do is look at the air filter and hold it up against the light and see if you can see through it and we can see through this one and it doesn't look to be too dirty so I don't think the air filter is the problem I don't think air is our issue in other words and in fact with this filter off you can try to start it and see if it'll start and I don't think this is going to start even now so I'm going to pull it a few times here And it's not it's not even popping or anything now you know, you know you want let me it goes without saying you want to make sure your switch is turned correctly so we are you know we do have the switch turned correctly and it just won't start okay so then what you can do is t take a little bit of ether this is a starting fluid that you can get at a you can get it at Walmart or pretty much any automotive area and just spray a little bit down in in the air cleaner here or where the air intake is just spray a little bit right directly into the carburetor like that and then you pull this and see it, it quits running right away now the reason it ran was because it got fuel this ether is fuel and as soon as the ether is gone it quits running that could mean you just don't have any fuel in your tank but we do have fuel in our tank here, we know that. So now we've got it narrowed down to one of two or three problems. It could just be the, the line going from the tank to the carburetor isn't good. Maybe it's got a hole in it. If it's got even a tiny pinhole in it, the fuel won't flow up because it, uh, it'll suck air before it'll suck fuel because fuel's heavier. So even a tiny pinhole will cause it not to work. So we have to check our fuel line and make sure our fuel line's good. The other thing we need to check uh, is the carburetor itself. But it's always best to check the simple thing first. Checking the carburetor itself is a lot harder, a lot more difficult, and this may be where you have to call in an expert. But at least you'll know what your problem is. But uh, for me, the way to check the uh, fuel line on this is uh, I can see the line here on the top. I don't know if you can see it, but there, there's a fuel line right here where my finger is. It's not very clear in the picture here. Fortunately, the lighting's not that good. But I can see the fuel line, and it's good. Um, doesn't look to be dry or cracked or anything. And as far as I can tell, it looks fine. I'm trying to see where it connects up to the carburetor, though, because that could be a problem area. And I can see the fuel line go all the way to the carburetor. It does not look like there's any problem with it. It still looks flexible, pliable, all of that. So my guess is it's not the fuel line. I also looked at the fuel line in the tank earlier. You can actually see the fuel line when you take a chainsaw gas cap off. And you can see the fuel line inside there. And I pulled it out and looked at it um, as best I can because there's a little filter on the end of it. And you can pull the filter and the end of the line out. As best I can tell, that line looks good. I don't think that's my problem. So I'm pretty sure in this particular case, the carburetor is the actual problem. I'm gonna let that be the end of the diagnosis for you. I just wanted this to be a helpful tip for you. If you're looking at your lawnmower, the same exact same things apply. You gotta have compression, you gotta have spark, you gotta have fuel, and you gotta have air. And it's not that hard to check any of those things if you just know how to go about checking it. 
Of course, you got to have some tools sometimes to take things apart and get into it. But if you're like me and you have the will and you don't have the money, you'll be more likely to do it yourself. And that's how I've learned to do all these things is because for the most part of my life, I didn't have the money to have somebody else do it. And I figured it out on my own. But I just thought that it would be helpful for you to see how you can check those four things on a gas engine. Now, I might just add, for those of you who are talk that have a problem with a diesel engine, it's generally simpler on a, ge on a diesel engine. It, and, and this is not 100% true. I'm oversimplifying it. But on a diesel engine, it's mostly just two things, maybe three things. Of course, you got to have air. You know, so I'm kind of counting that as the third thing is the air. But the two most important things is you got to have compression and you have to have um, fuel. And on a diesel, whenever it won't run, eight times out of ten, it's going to be fuel. It just, you got, if you get air in the fuel line, it won't run. Uh, you, you know, so diesel, for the most part, just fix your fuel problem and you'll fix your diesel engine. So it's a lot simpler on a diesel in, in that regard. Though I know a lot of people would argue with me because there, there's a lot of things that can go wrong on a diesel. I know that. But I'm just talking in general terms, and for the most part, that's the truth. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you would, please subscribe, and we'll get you more content coming down the road. Thank you very much.